Thank you. Okay, so welcome everybody um, to room one. Remember, room one is just for EMAS practices. So if you're a system one practice, you're in the wrong room, you need to be in room two. We're just going to be focusing on the EMAS resources today. I'm probably going to turn my camera off because it's a bit distracting, but I'll turn it on at the end. So we've got about 20 minutes just to roughly guide you through the cancer resources that we've made available for practices and we have a number of different cancer resources to support you with every part of the patient's cancer journey from early stages right the way through to diagnosing managing the cancer patient and where needed also end of life care we're not going to be focusing on all of that today we are mainly going to be focusing on fit testing because that's a requirement of the meeting today, um, but are open to any questions that you may have around any of the resources. Now, what I would suggest is when you do have some time, maybe have a listen to our cancer webinar that we made available at the near the beginning of this year, because that will give you a real good detail of all of the different resources that we have available. And I will make sure that I'll post in the chat um, how you can access that webinar if you've not seen it already. Now, remember, Arden's has been purchased across the whole of Surrey and across the whole of Sussex. So everything that I'm showing you today will be available on your system to use if you're not using it already. So I'm gonna, first of all, show you the NCD, so our network contract dead searches, because like we know, um, fit testing is definitely a requirement as part of IIF, IIF this year. So I wanna show you where you can find our network contract dead searches. Now, remember these are here to help you to monitor activity, track where you are throughout the year they're there to help you identify where work is still outstanding and they're also here to help you uh, be able to highlight any potential data quality issues that's affecting payment um, for your ncd requirements so that's important that we're keeping an eye on that too now if we go into population reporting if you're quite used to using our searches already you'll be used to this folder here but you've got the the arden searches folder which you'll find under your practice area and when you open it up, there's a number of different searches available for you to help you monitor activity within your practice. But the folder that I want to focus on today is the Network Contract DES folder, which you will always find under 5.32. Now, like all of the Arden's folders, at the very end, it will let you know what version number you are currently running on your system. And that's really important to note what version number you're on, because if you ever contact us via support, maybe there's an issue or if you need further clarification, we will always answer you, what is your current version number you are running? So that's how you would find it out. It's on the very right hand side of this. Now, as much as we would like to update everyone automatically, uh, unfortunately, we can't do that because it's a manual process where we need to come in and we need to update you all individually, although we are working on some sort of automated process. So you might find that the version that I currently have on my system may not be the same version that you're currently running within your practice system. But we make all of the latest versions available on our portal for you to download straight away. And I would say when it comes to anything relating to payment, it's really important that you are looking at the very latest version, just in case we've had to update them with codes or fix any problems that may have been identified. So at the moment, we are currently on version 1.4. No, 1.42, I believe, for the network dares. We'll have a look at the portal anyway. Um, and I definitely recommend making sure that you download that because it does reflect the changes of the IIF requirements for cancer, which is the fit test being 21 days before and taken off the 14 days after. So just really important that you have, have downloaded that. Now, in order to get into the portal, I'm just going to pop in a link to the chat there so that you've got this and I'm sure all of this information will be shared with you as well after this session but that's instructions on how you get into the portal and how you download the searches but once in the portal I just want to just briefly show you where you can find the network des folder to download so you will need to sign up if you've not used it already um, once you've signed up, you just click on the organisation that you wish to download the searches for, and you can do that for more than one practice if you work across practices. So you click on your organisation. And like mentioned, this will then show you all of the latest download files that we have for each of those search folders. So if you just scroll down, we've now got the option for contracts, and this is the latest version here. So it's contracts network dead, and it's the version 1.42 um, version. So I would definitely just check to see what you're currently on and download it if you haven't. 
Um, just to let you know that we have got a new process where you can actually request a search update. So rather than you having to do this all the time, you can click this and that will fire a message to our deployment team and we will aim to update you within seven days. So it's just important that you're aware of that as well. OK, so going back to the network desk searches. So if I'm navigating to the IIF folder um, here, you'll find the work done folder. So this is letting me know all of the activity that I've achieved so far within the practice. So that you can monitor that throughout the year, like I've mentioned. And here you can see your cancer requirement there. So it will tell you the number of two weight lower GI referrals that have been done. And out of those patients, it will tell you how many patients have met that criteria. They've had their fit tests correctly coded 21 days before the referral. That's the activity I'm gonna be paid on. Now, we don't have any work to do um, searches for you when it comes to cancer because we can't really predict how many lower GI referrals that you are going to create. So you won't find a work to do folder. However, the work done folder will give you a slight indication on how many rever referrals you've done versus how many fit tests have been done in the right time frame. What we do have, though, is a data quality folder. And notice there that we have two cancer searches here for you, highlighting where things are going slightly wrong. So this first search here is letting you know that a fit test has been recorded, but it's the wrong code for payment purposes. So therefore, the patient is not going to appear under your work done because the wrong fit test code has been used. And it's worth going into each of these patients. Hopefully it would say zero for you, but if not, it's worth going into each of those patients and making sure that they do have the correct code that you should be using. Now, we understand as well that sometimes when the coding comes in from the hospital, they may have been matched incorrectly with the right code to be used for fit testing. Then we've got a really good support article, which actually I'm just going to pop on the chat here. So you've got that, which will show you how you can match the right fit test code um, that is required for this process. I'm just going to pop that in the chat there so you've got that too. Now, just underneath that, we've also got another data quality search, and this is now looking at um, the fit test being recorded after the referral date, which is obviously not the requirement to meet for IIF. It's important. It's done 21 days before the referral. So that's going to help you find out who those patients are. Again, you can go in, identify what date it has been recorded and then update it accordingly if it is appropriate for that patient. So what I would say is if you've not looked at these data quality searches yet, just make sure you go in and um, make sure that um, there is no patients on here, correct them if they are, then that way it's not going to be impacting on your achievement at the end of the year. So I hope that's helpful, but that's just kind of keeping on track on where you are with your CAN02 requirements. If there are any questions around that, please do feel free to just post your question, questions in the chat. I am keeping an eye on that as well. Now, just moving on slightly from Network Deads, um, I want to talk about the fast track safety netting tools that we have in place. And remember, safety netting is very much part of uh, Network Deads as well and making sure that you've got a robust system in place. So we have the fast track safety netting tools to allow you to keep track of referrals, to allow you to keep track of urgent diagnostics. If you want to track that a patient has been requested a fit test and you want to make sure those results come back in in time, you can use Use our fast track safety netting template just to kind of see where you are with that patient. It also allows you to do some symptom monitoring if you're not ready to refer the patient on just yet. Now it is based on the use of a template and it has been here for a while so it might mean that you've already adapted this process within your practice um, but if not I'll just quickly show you how it works. So it's a template like I mentioned. So if you click on the run template option within a consultation, what you're searching for is the Arden's fast track safety netting template and everyone will have this in their system to use. When you OK that, it will then launch the template for you and it will then be broken down by the different areas, the three different areas that I mentioned. So your referral tracking, your diagnostic tracking and then also your symptom safety netting. For your referral tracking, it has the option at the top there to say that you have done safety netting for this patient. It's, although it's not part of IIF and it's not a payment indicator, it's still part of network contract days and it's still part of services that you need to work towards. So it's a good idea to definitely make sure you tick this box um, if you have done cancer safety netting for the patient. Just below that, it will then allow you to um, 
choose which uh, referral you have sent the patient on for. But if you are using a embedded Arden's referral within your EMIS system, and I believe um, definitely for Surrey, possibly Sussex as well, that you're using a lot of the um, Arden's referral forms for like your two-week wait forms, etc. When you use those separately and you save that into the patient's consultation, it will automatically put the fast track code in for you. So you don't need to do that again. Um, you'll be able to see that information on the right hand side. If not, you can use a drop down field to state exactly um, what you're referring the patient on for. Just below that, then you then have the option to launch the uh, information for the urgent referrals if you want to share that with the patient. And you've also got the options to be able to record that discussion that you've had with the patient, advising them of the next steps. So you can use the tick boxes to do that. And then it's a case of just saving it. What that will then do is it will be saved in the system. And if the system cannot be cannot see that the patient has been seen in clinic, so that's by you putting in a seen in code, someone in your practice has to do that. If it can't see that a scene in code has gone into the system, then it will flag up an alert in the quaff box, letting the um, person know who's accessing this patient record that there is an outstanding two week wait referral and the patient has not been seen yet. So that's a referral part of it. You've also got the diagnostic track in too. So if you want to track urgent diagnostics, you can do just tick the urgent box and notice there that we have got the option for fit test there. Um, it will let you know uh, the date of the latest fit test request if there was one. So you've got that information there. Uh, but again, you would go ahead and you would save that. And what will then happen is if it cannot, if the system cannot see that a fit test result has not come in within three weeks, then it will flag it up in the alert box to let you know that. And then last of all, you've got symptom safety netting. So if you're not just quite ready to refer the patient on, you want to track some of their systems, you can tick this option here for active monitoring. And then you can type in um, exactly what that patient, your symptoms you're monitoring for that patient. And then you can say how long you're monitoring those systems for. And then we've got like a little mini recall system, which will allow you to keep track of making sure those patients come in and have that symptom review. So that is the um, fast track safety netting template and also the alerts on the right hand side. So if it's diagnostics, it will say urgent diagnostics. If it's symptom safety netting, it will say symptom safety netting. It's really clear in the alert box. Now, of course, we're not just relying on people to be able to look at the cough box to know what's happening with the patient. We also have searches that you can fall back onto as well. So if I just go back into the population reporting module, and a really important folder for cancer that you need to be aware of within the Arden's folder is this one here, which is the 4.14 conditions cancer folder. We have many different searches to help with early cancer diagnosis, lung health check, national cancer screening. But here you'll find the fast track safety netting folder. So it works just a little bit like these alerts here. It's broken down by the referrals, diagnostic and symptoms. So for your referrals, it's letting you know referrals that are outstanding between 10 days and three weeks old or three weeks to 90 days old or more than three months old. So you can keep an eye on those patients and making sure that they are being seen. For your diagnostics, again, it's giving you searches to help you identify where there's been no results and it's been more than three weeks or more than 90 days. So you can keep an eye on those. Just within this folder as well, we've got the fit to eat weight stratification searches. So here we're just purely looking at fit testing. So again, we're looking at where there's been no result between one week, and 90 days ago, et cetera, et cetera. All the results have come in and they've not been reviewed. So just another way of making sure that you're managing those fit tests when they're going out and coming into your practice. So that's our fast track safety netting uh, resources, really straightforward to use. What I will do is just pop in our support article on that for you in case you want to share that with your colleagues. But if you do need any further training in any of the areas that I'm showing you today, then you can get in contact with us and we can do some practice level training if need be. Um, do let me know if there are any questions. I'm going to just pause for a brief second and then we'll move on to some of the cancer searches and then finish off with the cancer analyzer. Perfect. OK, I'm going to move on. So again, just sticking with the safety netting, it's really important to be aware of other searches that we have to help you with your safety netting. And that is back in the NCD folder. So if I go back down to folder 5.32, 
If you've got cancer that falls within IIF, which makes sense, that's your CAN02 um, metrics that you need to follow. But cancer also sits within service requirements. Now, remember, there's different parts of network contract days. It's not just IIF, although sometimes it feels like that. It's not. You've also got service requirements. You've got additional roles. You've got capacity and access. So within your service requirements area, there's no specific targets that you need to reach, but there are some improvements that need to be done within that area. And the reason why I mention that is because cancer also uh, falls within your service requirements area too. And funny enough, fit testing also falls within your um, service requirements area too. But I think where the confusion is, is for the service requirements, it still states 21 days before and 14 days after, which was the old requirement for IIF. Obviously, for IIF now, that has been stripped back to just 21 days before. So it's just important that when you are running these searches, if it's anything to do with CAN02, make sure you're in the IIF folder and using that search there and not within the cancer folder. This is just general improvement in this area. It's not working towards your payment achievement for IIF. I hope that makes sense. But under the cancer folder, um, again, we've broken it down by work done, um, work to do, and also highlighting any data quality issues for you as well, mainly where the cancer safety netting code has been added after the referral rather than on the day or before the referral rather than on the day. So you may want to have a look into that for just general patient care. And that is the fast track safety netting and of course the network does searches. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was our cancer analyzer tool. Now, this is a brilliant tool um, to help you to understand. So it's mainly to be used by your clinical team and it's looking to see whether the patient's symptoms and findings that they're capturing with that patient is meeting the requirements for the NG12 suspected cancer guidance. So it's all based on nice guidance this process is. One thing that I will mention is the Cancer Analyzer tool is only available for practices who are on Resource Publisher. You're not a Resource Publisher site. If you're a Template Manager site, you will not have access to this. But the good news is, is for those that are Template Manager, watch this space because EMIS are rolling over everyone to Resource Publisher by the beginning of November. The last time we checked, there was only 200 sites now that were left on Template Manager. So as soon as you become a resource publisher site, you will have access to this um, process that I'm just about to show you. If you're thinking, I don't know what she's talking about, um, if you click on the EMIS bubble down to configuration, either you're going to be seeing um, template manager or you're going to be seeing resource publisher. And that's how you know which one you're currently on. So. The Cancer Symptom Analyzer, which is mainly for resource publisher sites, is based on the use of templates. So quite similar to the fast track safety net template that I showed you earlier. So what your clinician would do is when they're ready to understand where, what the next steps are and whether or not that patient meets the requirement for a referral, they would type in suspected and that will open, that will give them the suspected cancer symptoms template. So that's the first template they would use in this process. When they click on OK, what will then happen is it will launch this template here and they would use this template to populate all of the symptoms and findings that that patient has shared with them um, when speaking to them via a consultation or via whichever way that they're speaking to that patient. Now I picked up that this patient has abdo pain, they're also experiencing rectal bleeding and I particularly went to the abdo symptoms page but notice there that we've got um, symptom specific pages on the left hand side. And we always, always, always recommend before you go ahead and save the template, make sure you also complete information within non-specific features so that you're picking up absolutely everything. Remember, the more symptoms, the more findings that you're capturing, the more accurate your guidance is going to be on, on the next steps. So here I can record any non-specific features. I'm also going to say that this patient is experiencing weight loss. I can also capture information like smoking status if I need to as well. Primary care investigation is good, that page too, because it also incorporates any tests that the patient has to further help you understand on what to do next. So what we do here is we pull through all of the relevant blood tests that you may want to consider. And notice on the right hand side, it gives you what the latest result is rather than you having to go through the patient's records. And you can further explain those results too by using the most common options down here. So I'm going to say that this patient is also anemic. Remember, this is all building up the next steps on what I need to do for that patient. 
can see there, I can also pick things like chest X-rays if I want to, um, urine, urine tests, etc. So once I've captured all of the information that I need, I then save that template. And what that will then do is it will then announce if I'm now ready to launch the cancer analyzer, which is basically the guidance and the next steps that I need to take for that patient. If I'm not, I can return, I can capture more symptoms if I need to. I'm going to say yes here. And based on all of the symptoms and findings that I've captured in that first template, this is now going to give me a breakdown of what that guidance is. Now, because I picked up abdo pain, it's going to give me detailed guidance around that. Because I picked up rectal bleeding, it's going to give me um, detailed guidance around um, bleeding as well. But at the very bottom, I've got a summary page here, which takes all of this in consideration and it will tell me exactly what tests I need to complete. So here it's telling me I need to consider a chest X-ray, for example. Um, it will tell me what blood tests I need to consider, just everything that I need to consider. And then, of course, what referral I need to be looking at as well. Um, not the best example for what you're focusing on today, but it just gives you a good example of how you would work it, even for your lower GI um, information as well. Down the bottom, then, I can also type in some further notes if I wish to on what I plan to do next and I can save it. What we've done is we have then also been able to give you the option to launch the fast track safety netting template if you need to. That's our cancer analyzer tool. Um, so I am going to wrap up because I know that the other breakout room has also uh, finished as well. But I hope that's been useful and always give us a shout if you need any further training. Thank you.